Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to discuss the four Crystal Wall characters. We've got Iceman, Emma Frost, and Sabretooth up front, and then just under Emma Frost we have the lowly Kurt Cobain, Adam Warlock, uh, and discuss what I think you should do about them, where you should rank them, how valuable they are, and which ones you should go for first, second, third, and possibly fourth, or if you should go for them at all. Because I've had a chance now to play enough with Iceman, I've played with him with the CTP, so I have a, a very good idea of where he fits among these other characters now I've never given her a CTP but um, she's performed well in spite of that but she's the only one to have a uniform and then Sabretooth's had a CTP since he came out and then I've played around with a few different CTPs for Adam Warlock but he settled on this one so for starters we do have to point out that there is a difference between the first three characters and the last one Adam Warlock costs substantially more crystals than the other three now, technically, you do get some crystals refunded when you get Adam Warlock up to level 50 and then level 60, um, but you do need to invest a lot more to get him ranked up because unlike the three up there, the first initial purchase um, is going to cost you substantially more. I, I believe it's in the realm north of like 6,000 crystals, 6,000 or 6,600, just like uh, Magneto uh, or very similar. And then on top of that, he only comes in at three stars. So the difference here is instead of getting a six star character in the in the three up there, you get a three star character who's not a mutant, which is you know interesting to point out. Uh, but the thing is also a native tier two. So because of that, the rank uh, the rank uh, six black antimatter is needed. You do need to um, use black antimatter uh, starting from rank one and kind of building up more, just like you would do for someone like Thanos. Odin Dormammu, he is as expensive as those characters, the only difference is you skip the first three stars. However, if you've done the math before or you've ranked up one of those native tier 2s before, the first three t stars are not very expensive, it's those last three stars that really milk you out of, you know, tens of millions of gold and, you know, thousands upon thousands of uh, black antimatter. I don't know the exact number, so I'll put them on the screen now and I'll kind of figure them out in, in editing, um, but that is definitely a huge factor. and. In, in evaluating these characters, I don't want to just evaluate their worth in terms of what they can do for you because that would just be a tier list and you could go ahead and look at the tier list and you'd see that Emma Frost is at the top of the tier list uh, compared to these other three guys. However, in this situation, because we're talking about the premium currency, crystals, and because we're talking about more crystals and then we're possibly talking about even more crystals and then black antimatter and gold, it's very important to, um, you know, also work out the value in terms of what you're getting and in terms of your investment and the return on your investment. So with that being said, on almost every single list that I'm going to uh, talk about and on almost every single list that anyone would talk about when they're talking about these four characters, Adam Warlock is at the bottom. He's the only character that can't go to level 70 out of these three. He's the only character, I mean, he's the only character that ha hasn't had a uniform despite the fact that he's been here the longest. He's the first one. He got here before Emma Frost um, and he's just, and he's the most expensive. So those three in combination make him terrible. He is unique. He does have a few factors going for him for the future, for his potential. He can revive. He was the first character to bring a camera shifting or a camera changing SFX skill with his fifth. Um, and he's got lots of iframes. So there is one list, and I'll talk about it just very briefly. There is one list, if you were purely a PvP type of account or type of player, and you really only cared about timeline battle and alliance conquest and battle world and those types of PvP game modes, then Adam Warlock does have value. He doesn't have that much value in timeline any anymore, but he still has a lot of value in conquest, and he's probably one of, if not the strongest, level 60 uh, conquest character. So that's a, that's a big deal if you're not talking about tier 3s, you're not talking about level 70s, he suddenly rises and he is among the cream of the crop. So in that case, if I were to make a PvP only list, I would definitely have to discount Sabretooth a lot because he basically brings no PvP value to the table. Iceman, Iceman in a similar way doesn't have enough weapons to take PvP seriously with only one real true iframe. And so then you end up with a list Assuming you've purchased Emma Frost's uniform for PvP that looks like this. Emma Frost, Adam Warlock, Iron Man, Sabretooth. I don't want to get too much into this list because I don't like this list and I hope that there aren't many players out there who want to do this because it's it's painful to suggest that you're going to spend like 12,000 crystals for two blast PvP characters. But I just want to be clear that Adam Warlock is not completely worthless. He does have value. It's just very niche. 
it's very very niche so moving on and kind of jumping over to um if you're just going to purchase the character especially if you're just going to get them at six stars and you're not going to spend any more crystals after that you just want to do that initial burst of investment what are you going to do well immediately adam warlock goes to the bottom of that list because his his value or his, his value is not even close to these other characters at level 60 at six stars and his his cost is more than double right because these are 2500 crystals six star characters whereas adam warlock is over 5000 uh just for three stars so it's, it's mind-bogglingly different but among these three if you don't have their uniforms in which case i'm only talking about emma frost you don't want to invest any more crystals because it's a 1050 uniform for her marvel now look um she is substantially worse with her base kit in that case I would say that Sabretooth is by far the best six star character out of these three. He's a villain, which is a premium tag, and for only 2,500 crystals to pick up a strong combat villain, especially if you don't have the bio selectors to invest in Minerva, you don't have the the, the, the resources for Apo a a Apocalypse, or you don't have the premium stuff for Juggernaut, he's huge. He's very, very strong. He's close to competing with Minerva with her uniform. So without a uniform, I think he takes the cake as the number one combat villain in the game, which is a serious tag. He's got healing, um, even at six stars. He's a very, very strong character. Pretty much a lot of his value comes from his four star passive so having him at tier one is not a, a bad thing it's not a negative at all so definitely Sabretooth would be the best uh, tier one six star character I'd say Iceman would be the second best again if you don't have Emma Frost's uniform because he does have a lot of value still at tier one because a lot of his uh, skills have the you know the big self buff on four and then just the damage and the AoE and the, the, the effects for Shadowland he does get a lot from his tier two passive but he can still tango at tier one now if you don't get Emma Frost's uh, uniform I don't really think it's good investing in her at all I don't really think she's a very fun character to play she's difficult her rotation is awkward it, it takes very precise timing on when to cancel five into four um, and generally if you miss that window and you miss your proc her damage is completely garbage because her one and her two and her three don't do any damage at all I mean one and two do damage but it's it's so tiny you would think that the bar is actually going back up and you're healing the enemy in addition for 2500 crystals to get a character that you're basically only going to be using against ebony maw is a steep price to pay psylocke comes with a free mission and although she's more expensive she's way better without her uniform compared to her uh human torch is free and there are other characters to value however if you do get her uniform at tier one i do think that she is either in co competition with iceman for second place or possibly better than iceman for second place so it depends there whether you're going to spend the extra crystals or not but spending the extra crystals is definitely the difference between having an above average to excellent emma frost and having a below average to kind of mediocre emma frost so that's really what it shakes out at tier two, we get a little bit more serious. Uh, unfortunately, Sabretooth, although he does get a lot from his tier two passive, the biggest weakness with Sabretooth is the defense. He doesn't have any, like his defense is very low, even for a combat type. His HP, although it's high, it, there's no defense there. He has no damage reduction, nothing. And so he's. it's very easy for him to get one-shotted, even at level 70, unless you build him defensively. And you don't want to build him defensively because he has all these crit rate, crit damage, uh, all defense down weapons, but then you need him to get hit in order to use those weapons most effectively so it's a bit of an awkward kit right now i think Sabretooth will need a uniform to realize his full potential with something like 10 or 20 percent damage reduction or a buff to his heal or like a, an extra 20 or 30 percent hp so that he's he's tanky enough to absorb some hits um, without getting one shotted if he if he if he doesn't get one or two shotted then he's very very good if he can just do a little bit of chip damage here or there if he had a skill for example that 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 dealt, dealt damage to himself that would be fantastic um, but right now i think it really just puts his value in pve i'm talking shadowland i'm talking world boss but it can be frustrating at times playing him although he's very fun and very powerful because you do want to get hit but you can't really manage the damage sometimes and so if you go into a level 70 shadowland for example he can do it with the all defense down and the damage he can do it but you will get one shot it so you basically have to give up part of his kit in order to survive so it's a bit awkward there um at tier two with her uniform i do think emma frost is probably the best character here out of the four again adam warlock goes immediately to the bottom with her uniform at tier two emma frost is a is a valuable weapon not only in pve but also in pvp she has proven her worth as sort of your second tier of pvp character and really it revolves around her third skill illusion stab the, the ability to give herself all defense super armor but it's that 
huge 85% I was gonna say 75 but it's 85% damage reduction for 10 seconds if you play manually you can keep that illusion stab up 100% of the time as long as you don't get interrupted you'll have that and the summon that she that she creates often will absorb the hits for you so you can use in some limited ways you can use Emma Frost as a nice counter to characters like uh, Captain Marvel now it's still gonna be difficult to combo her five and four I still have issues with it myself in terms of when to cancel but she has the mind resistance down and she has the damage on four with the immunity so she can definitely push very high stages of ebony comparable to Psylocke not necessarily with with the uniform but without for sure and so although it is a pretty steep price to pay because you've got to you know pay the thousands of crystals to get her to tier two and then you have to pay the extra thousand crystals for a uniform and then you have to rank up her uniform and this is where the biggest cost comes in because guess what guys she's not native tier two so you are going to uh require her bios so you either purchase more of her bios or you need to use rank up tickets uniform rank up ticket so something like a mega mythic uniform rank up ticket is best saved for characters like these the emma frosts the the uh saber tooths and the ice mans uh, and so with that ex insane cost you do expect the character to be a lot better and technically she is out of the three characters with her uniform she is by far the best one for pvp out of the three characters with her uniform for pve it's still a very close match between her and sabertooth but i think she still edges sabertooth out so technically she is uh, the best for both if you max them out you give them ctps level 70 uniform to mythic etc but she's got a mythic uniform so you have to take that into consideration honestly i do think that at the end of the day considering the value that you that you get in return and considering your investment overall if you're going to completely super max these four characters i think Sabretooth is the best my that's my personal choice um because he doesn't require as much investment but he's on a power level that exceeds emma frost by a long shot without her uniform it's only with an extra uniform which you know is technically costing you thousands of crystals because of the, all of the rank ups on top of that if you don't use a mega mythic ticket and otherwise it's costing you a mega mythic uniform ticket um the, the cost just doesn't outweigh the marginal benefit that she's going to give you yes there's that pvp aspect but are you going to sacrifice a mega mythic uniform ticket and a thousand crystals just for an extra pvp character possibly but maybe not Iceman unfortunately he can't really compete too well um, once he gets to tier 2 compared to Emma Frost and Sabretooth he's not as good as Sabretooth just flat out at tier 2 level 70 and he's only better than Emma Frost if she doesn't have her uniform his PvP value is just not there although it is a bit better I would say than than Sabretooth it's not still going to be enough um, but the huge AoE and all of the debuff effects means that um, he can definitely surprise people in, in Conquest and he can definitely, uh, you know, sp possibly solo rumbles as well in, in the high stages because of that insane AoE that he has on his fifth skill. And, you know, to a lesser extent, two and three that allow him to lock down multiple opponents at a time. So he definitely does still have a lot of worth. Adam Warlock, on the other hand, needs a complete rework. He needs a uniform like Jean Grey to completely transform him because right now he has a lot of gifts that make him powerful. He's got, you know, multiple priority iframes that you can chain. He's got self buffs, immunity. Um, he's got a, a V pad skill and he revives. So he's definitely got a lot of weapons at his disposal, but he just doesn't have, uh, you know, he doesn't have anything else and with with low damage and with level 60 he just can't hit up enough uh to take advantage in in a pvp scenario he just can't um deal with level 70s and tier 3s so you you're only using him you know less than half the time because most people just fight with level 70s and tier 3s these days um especially level 70 type characters so that is my overall analysis for these three three and a half four characters um hopefully it'll help you uh make a better decision in what you're going to purchase if you're going to purchase any any of them at all just know that the cost for the character should be a, an important factor because they're so expensive and because you also have other characters with similar initial costs that you should also consider because if we're going to talk about all of the 2500 crystal characters for the at that initial six star investment you should also throw valkyrie and nick fury and i believe there's one more character possibly into the mix 
um, and then in that case ghost I think it is um, and possibly Killmonger so then in that case um, you have more characters to consider I don't consider any of those characters better than these ones the only exception being possibly Nick Fury but he definitely needs to be tier 2 and then that kind of muddies the water because you can't continue to spend crystals to get Nick Fury to tier two so let me know what you guys think of these four and their ranking let me know if you disagree or agree down below in the comments let's have a conversation and of course if you like what you see i hope to see you again tomorrow take care